Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome if you're new. Uh, so today we're going to be doing the part two of the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics uh, video that I made previously where I unopened the package and kind of gave my first impressions. So I sent uh, a ton of samples to the lab and so today I'm going to be going over kind of the process of um, my testing and then giving you guys the results of that testing. So to start, I just wanna go over the different samples that I sent in. I did send in four different uh, types of samples to be tested by the lab, and each of them were made up of multiple lipsticks to actually make up that full sample size. The lab required 10 grams minimum to be able to do a full microbial testing on those products, and so I had to buy multiples of the different products to actually make up that 10 gram sample. So one of the control samples that I did was um, a lipstick from Too Faced Cosmetics, and the reason why I chose this one is because the formula was actually really similar to the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics uh, lipstick formula. It contained both water-soluble and oil-soluble ingredients, and it had a very similar type of preservative system. So to me, it was a very comparable formula to the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics lipstick. The second control that I did was um, actually a lipstick from Claire's. Uh, I wanted to do kind of like a lower end, non Sephora brand lipstick to just, you know, again, have a different variety of controls. Although in this formula, um, I did not see any water, so it's not exactly a comparable formula, but I did want to have a different kind of price range to compare upon. So as far as the Jaclyn Hill samples, I had two different types of samples. I had one sample uh, size that was made up from lipsticks that had already been opened. So those are the two that you saw me open on camera in my previous video. And then I had another uh, customer send me their two lipsticks that they had actually opened but had not used. So that is the first sample of the Jaclyn Hill cosmetics. Now the second one was actually people that had, you know, um, complained about their product, got a refund and actually got a replacement product from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, or they just had never like opened the original packaging straight from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Um, and so that second sample was unopened package, unopened packages still in that Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics packaging directly from her um, warehouse or ship out place. Now what I will mention about all of these samples that I ran is they're really small sample sizes. Just testing, you know, maybe four to five lipsticks is generally not enough to make a very conclusive decision, but this was kind of all I had to work with in the beginning um, as far as samples to send in. And I think this is a good representation of both, you know, open products, unopened products, and then a couple of controls to have a solid comparison of what's going on here. So the microbial testing that I had done by the lab, um, I'm just going to cover kind of what they did and the different tests that um, were used and the methods that they actually used to complete those tests. So for every single sample, I had a total plate count done, which is essentially where they're just counting everything that grows within a certain, um, you know, swab onto an agar plate. And the method that they used is the current US Pharmacopoeia number 61. Uh, the second one is yeast and mold, and again, the method is current US Pharmacopoeia 61. So the next tests are actually for specific pathogens, and they all follow the method, uh, the current US Pharmacopoeia method number 62. And uh, I was testing for E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Salmonella, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and these are all really common uh, pathogens that impact human health. Okay, so now that I've explained my methods, um, I am going to leave uh, links to the PDFs of all of the reports. Now I have redacted both my information and the information of the analytical lab just to protect us both. Uh, we don't need that information out there on the internet. And so you'll find in the description box, there's uh, links to all the different PDF reports, as well as um, the actual invoice for all of this testing. So this testing cost me a total of $406.80 Canadian. Um, you know, it's about like a hundred bucks per test because I did four different sample sizes for the microbial testing. And it does take about five to seven days with the lab once they receive the samples and they're processed. All right, so now let's get into the juicy bits, which is the actual report results. So I'm gonna start with the Too Faced report. Um, so if you want to pull that one up, we can walk through it together. 
So for the total plate count, we had less than 10 coliform, colony forming units per gram, um, which is essentially nothing. So there was nothing growing on these plates. Okay, so moving on to the clear sample. Again, total plate count, yeast and mold, less than 10 coliform colony forming units per gram and for all of the pathogens they were negative and moving on to the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics sample number one now this was opened lipsticks that I opened and another customer opened did not use and then were tested um, but again same thing we've got less than 10 colony forming units per gram for the total plate count and for yeast and mold and completely negative for E. coli, Staphylococcus, Salmonella and Pseudomonas. Um, and for the last Jaclyn Hill sample, um, again, total plate count, yeast and mold, less than 10 colony forming units per gram, E. coli, staph, salmonella, and pseudomonas are all negative. So what does this mean? Well, it means that all of these samples are negative for microbial contamination as far as all of the tests that I did. Um, but is the product contaminated? Well, I think that we all visually saw from all the, you know, the microscope videos, all of the close-up videos. Yes, this product is contaminated. Um, if you can see something in a product, it is definitely contaminated. But my biggest concern was for human um, health and safety and the things that you maybe can't see. Um, so from my reports, there is no microbial contamination in these products but that doesn't mean that they're not contaminated with something else because we all saw that they are. But from my accounts, there is actually no microbial contamination in both of the samples that I sent in for testing um, with the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics lipsticks. So I know maybe that wasn't the most exciting video and maybe not exactly what you were hoping for or expecting, but I am here to bring you guys the facts and the science and not, you know, the tea. So. I can only report on what I received from the third party lab that I did testing with, and that is the results that I have. So let me know if you guys have any questions about my method or my process or anything like that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, if you wanna know anything more about microbial testing for cosmetics or anything to do with cosmetic science, just leave a comment down below, send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter, and definitely subscribe to this channel if you wanna see some more um, science cosmetic videos and want to be part of this awesome community of science babes. All right, I'm just going to leave it really short and sweet, but thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for your support and I'll see you guys in my next video.